if I told you that um now if I told you or if not if I told you it seems as if from my own kind of like novice uh beginner um outside perspective it seems like the fashion world has really really felt um the departure or the lack of Phoebe Philo in the fashion week calendar I think people have I kind of really underestimated just how much of an influence she had on fashion overall I'm gonna I'm not gonna say the business because I think the business side of it is where I think Phoebe maybe kind of uh didn't um really meet the standards that maybe Celine wanted or whatever I don't know um, I'm not sure the kind of inner workings of it. It didn't seem like she wanted to bring the brand into the 21st century, right? There was no online store. You had to buy most of the things from their own uh, branded boutiques all around the world, but obviously only in the big metropolitan cities, which is probably a bit of a pain for some of the women that wanted to buy into the brand. But in terms of just fashion, in terms of what she was able to do in how she was able to communicate the message across about this is what the modern woman wants. And the fact that she was probably one of the only designers, probably apart from maybe Musha Prada, who's able to appeal to women from such a wide um, variety of ages, socioeconomic backgrounds and race and whatever it may be, right? She was kind of like the every woman's brand, which is fucking weird, right? Because women are so picky when it comes to colors, when it comes to collections, when it comes to who they're, who's talking to them, how they're talking to them. Women are probably the most discerning uh, fashion customers there is out there, right? And they're very trend focused, right? As opposed to men. Men are not very trend um lean leaning for the most part right brands like men's brands can kind of get away with having uh three or four or ten let's say uh staple looks that they kind of continually kind of recycle and kind of apply a little twist on men are quite low in that regard but women are quite fickle right so if something isn't hitting they'll jump ship straight away but phoebe Filer was so good that she was able to hold on to those women throughout different stages of their lives right different stages of their kind of you know um um i don't know uh fashion journey and still be able to provide and speak to them no matter what no matter how her life changed right she came into it uh, with only a certain amount number of kids um then i think she had a couple of kids and i think she had one kid as towards the end of her collection being launched she took some breaks so, i mean she was kind of changing as 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 she was at the helm of celine she was kind of growing into being like a, uh, from going to being like an older lady no not old lady to being a young woman to being in a young mother do you know what I mean? And she was able to kind of transition there and also be able to provide women with the wardrobe that they want to feel empowered, to feel sexy, to feel sleek, to feel comfortable in the workplace. Just really amazing clothing, all in all, right? And it seems like there's a real void at the moment in the marketplace for someone to fill in that gap. Like, who's going to fill that gap of Celine? Who's going to provide women with those clothes that make them feel like they can get shit done and they can go to the club and they can hang out with their girlfriends and they can, you know, uh, break some necks down the street. How's who's going to do that? And it seems like, you know, everyone's kind of clamoring to kind of get that spot. You've got Victoria Beckham doing some good shit at the moment. But I kind of spotted this random brand um, part of the Stockholm uh, Fashion Week. This is for 4019. I've never heard of them before in my life. Don't really follow any of the brands on Stockholm Fashion Week. But it just stuck out to me, just kind of thinking about the influence that Selena's had or Phoebe Fowler's had in the fashion scheme overall, right? Because you look at it even from high street brands, right? High street brands are probably feeling the loss of Celine even more, I mean, even for Phoebe Fowler, even more than anyone else, right? And um, because she was probably one of the most copied brands out there, especially for people like uh, Zara and H&M, they will take their clothing and kind of like dilute it down. Even Cos were doing it for, for a certain period, although they moved on to Color and, and a few other people afterwards. But... She, she occupied such an interesting space, right, where a high street brand could take that um, those codes from, from Phoebe Philo and apply it to their collection in store. And then the, the, the woman from the general public who has no idea who Phoebe Philo is could see that jacket, could see that dress, could see those trousers and immediately want it. Right, even if it wasn't something that was featured or something, something that just they just be like, oh wow, this looks amazing, this looks different. This was something I could wear with a blaze, something I could wear with a small top or with a vest top, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like they knew exactly what that was, and that was that. That's the beauty I think of it. Like she appealed to the fashionistas and to the general public, so something that's really hard to do. And I saw this brand called uh, House of Dagmar. Um, I'm assuming it's a, a Scandinavian-based brand, and then it immediately got me thinking that like, that is kind of like the quintessential. If you if you if you had to tell me the quintessential uh, Phoebe Philo customer, it would be the Scandinavian woman, right? The Scandinavian woman that that works within the uh, creative design, fashion, art field. 
the ones that are curators, the ones that are um, editors, the ones that work in merchandising, in logistics, the ones that go to work in fucking hills every day, right? Who get dressed up, who kind of like can make the effort to put on actual outfits, right? Kind of an extension of the uh, the Vogue Paris crew. Do you remember when everyone was obsessed with like Emmanuel Alt and Geraldine Saglio, whatever her name is, right? There was that extension of that, like the kind of a really girly version of those kind of girls like a lot of makeup a lot of hair always done um no smoking of the cigarettes of course because they're more health conscious and they drink shakes and they probably uh, have a peloton bike in their house or whatever but this this collection called the house of dagmar kind of reminded me a little bit of it of like old school phoebe Fowler. i'm not gonna not say whether or not it's good or not but just in terms of like the influence of what she had in the overall um fashion landscape i really like that blue coat i think again all the stuff that celine phoebe Fowler did with with celine could easily be put into a, a men's wardrobe like so 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 easily if anything what Hadi Semen was doing at Saint Laurent was kind of a great um, mirror a great kind of um, uh, accompaniment uh, to what Celine was doing, right so the Saint Laurent man and the Phoebe Fowler Celine woman could could be going out like they could be together they could be a couple they could be a, a partnership they could be uh, colleagues that work in the same department you could easily see that happening and this kind of collection from the house of Dagmar looks really nice I like I, I love the jackets um, the silhouettes obviously are quite the same loads of those kind of the slits on the front of the pants it was what, uh, what Phoebe Fowler was doing towards the end of her time at Celine um, Louis Vuitton have obviously done it under Virgil he's done it a few times I think I've seen Telfar do the same sort of stuff um the heels of course look amazing the boots probably don't work that great with the outfit that i've seen here kind of like the stack jaden sort of boots um but overall i love it and obviously like the, the the fact that the collection's like in a showroom with some pieces of art around it kind of again lends itself to kind of a uh, celine who kind of did a load phoebe Fowler, who did loads of kind of work with contemporary artists installations and and really caught cool invites and all that sort of stuff kind of like um what similar to what JDM is doing at, at Lueve, but you can definitely see the influence of um, Celine has had on the fashion on her fashion um, landscape. But again, I'm interested to see who's going to be the person or what brand is going to be able to kind of take that market um, by the scruff of the neck, or is it going to be a thing where women are going to just going to weigh it out and see what Phoebe Fowler does next? Because I'm really interested to see what she does next. Because I really do hope that she comes back with her own namesake brand. Because um, I kind of view the whole talented designers always um, go into a house the same way that I view big major label artists not setting an example for the young artists and not going independent, right? If you're Drake, you probably don't need to sign with a label. You can probably get away with doing a distribution deal, right, with one of the big labels to make sure your stuff gets where it needs to get to. But you can probably do everything in-house, right, for the most part, apart from just pressing the machine button, right? You don't need to use them. And I think, by and large, I think artists now in the music industry are getting caught up in 360 deals precisely because of that reason, right? Most of them are coming into the game with no money anyway. So you understand it with the younger artists. So when someone's going to give you a $1 million advance, even though that advance isn't money in your pocket, it's a loan, they see it as a chance to kind of come up immediately. Whereas the independent grind is a bit more of a slow burn, right? You've got to build a buzz. You have to build a following. You have to sell tickets. You've got to make merch everything comes out of your own pocket you've got to put up money first right similar to what um dame dash would say right you've got to put up the money put the money put the money to be the boss but not everyone wants to do that so people just want to plug in and play right and be just kind of you know part of the overall kind of content plan of a record label but i think in fashion it's the same thing i think if more fashion designers especially the big ones the talented ones took the chance or took the kind of you know the mold of like maybe not showing as often, right? Not having maybe a resort collection or pre full collection in the calendar, maybe showing only spring and autumn or winter, wherever it may be, right? And then, and then doing it all kind of themselves without having a big kind of label, a big, not something one of the big conglomerates, maybe doing a partnership similar to what um, Rick Owens did, right? Where he sold a bit of his brand. I think, I'm not too sure what the company is, but you know that, that kind of thing where you sell it to a, a, a bit of a, another investment company they invest some cash in you they take a little chunk of the ownership and then you're able to operate in still like a small mold the same same like uh, rick owens i think a lot of a lot of brands coming up now would follow that mold and of course if you have phoebe Fowler, you have to kind of imagine like she's been working in the industry for like a long time i don't want to count anyone's pockets but i'm sure she's not hurting for money right even just being a consultant even if she's like 
um, shadow designing H&M collections, which I'm sure it's happened because I've heard stories of big um, photographers doing the campaigns for H&M and all that malarkey and just not wanting their name to be attributed to it, right? But they do that in order to kind of, you know, um, make sure the lights are on and then they'll do like, you know, uh, for the love projects, like working with ID or Arena Home for free or for a reduced price because that's something you do for the love. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone like a Phoebe Fallow is designing silently in the background for cause or something, whatever it may be. But I would love to see her come back with her own thing, like just on her, on her own, like her own namesake brand. I think that would be so important. I think people would absolutely love it. Um, and again, I think maybe in between that time before she ends up doing that, it's really a big, it's going to be a big task for whoever's out there to kind of like take that mantle and kind of fill the spot and say, okay, cool. Women who want that look, I've got you. So far, no one's kind of hit out of the park just yet. I mentioned Victoria Beckham. She's doing some good stuff, but it seems like that that space is still kind of unoccupied. No one's kind of claimed it. So it was interesting to see what happens in the next few seasons. I know Phoebe Fowler's doing her first kind of public appearance since she left Celine, right? Doing some sort of panel talk show, panel discussion, I think, coming up very soon. So I'm interested to see what she says there. I'm sure she won't say nothing too controversial because I'm sure when you leave those kind of places and you're given... I'm not sure. Did she leave or she gets sacked officially? I'm not too sure. I think she left, right? I think she kind of called it quits because she's always kind of been a bit um, different in that regard, right? She's always kind of um, prioritized her family life um, and her kind of, you know, uh, mental health over the rigmarole of fashion. She's kind of always taking breaks and in between and stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if she actually decided, you know what, I'm done. So um, if that is true and if it kind of coincided with the fact that LVMH wanted to kind of really ramp up the revenue um, that... Um, Celine was generating, so they went to you know the probably the, the best person to do it, Heidi Simone. Um, that would make sense, but I'll be interested to see what she says in the in the thing panel anyway. I'm sh- like I said, maybe it'll be a bit of a gag order there in terms of if she's got a, a kind of a golden handshake. She might be able to say too much, but I really hope she comes back and does her own namesake label because people would work, people would cop that in a heartbeat. If she came back and just did her own because essentially like she did she did the same thing with Celine, right? She just kind of you know plugged in her. Um, her aesthetic into a big house and kind of you know presented it on the runway but she could easily do that with her own name um that would be fucking cool if that was possible but hey ho there we go that was just a random thing i saw on the interwebs i thought i would share you know um where's celine gonna go now man oh my god